All right. Uh, hey, everyone. My name is Anthony Damcock. Um, my capstone project is uh, officially titled Uncensored, George Carlin's Influence on Political Comedy. Um, so I did a video for this. Um, it is still in the editing phase. So if there's one thing I learned throughout this capstone process, um, video editing is a pain in the beyond. So, um, so yeah, it is still in the it is still in the editing process. But um, I figured I'd put in a little summary of what the video will be about. Um, so, for those who don't know who George Carlin is, he's widely regarded as one of the greatest comedians of all time. Um, he's, his humor is often perceived as just truth telling. Um, and instead of, you know, most comedians use uh, personal stories to describe their, you know, and, and spin it comedically to uh, get audiences to laugh. Carlin normally just used general, just truth telling. They call it truth telling because he's just speaking about the world's issues, I guess, um, depending on the show that, that, that he would be doing. Um, one of his big vocal points was about politics. Um, he, he had a lot of viewpoints about politics. A lot of his comedy was based around politics. And in a weird twist, um, tying politics and comedy together, um, his uh, Seven Dirty Words routine was a very influential piece um, because it led to a massive Supreme Court ruling um, that basically gave the FCC uh, power over what words they, uh, people can and can't say when they are uh, live on the air. Um, the video kind of looked back on the Senator words routine, um, as in, you know, the influence that he had using politics in his comedy, as well as uh, Carlin's career as a whole, just to kind of give background on, on who he is. So, why did I do this? Uh, why, why did I choose this as my, as my capstone? Uh, in a world that's now dominated by political opposition and what can only be described as complete chaos uh, within political walls, um, George Carlin's comedy that he performed nearly, you know, as many as 40 years ago is still relevant today. Uh, Carlin died in 2008, and for reference, uh, that was about five days before my seventh birthday. So, his, in today's society, his comedy is, uh, despite being influential, um, you know, has the potential to kind of be lost on uh, newer generations. Um, so this project is, in essence, a refusal to let his influence fade away. Uh, given that he was, again, a truth-telling comedian, um, I felt that it was important to not let his legacy um, fade as, as, uh, as time goes on. So, um, this came together through a proposal for a panel for um, the Eastern Communication Association, um, which I've had the privilege to go to this year. Um, and this was one of the things that I proposed. Um, I'll actually show that slideshow here in uh, just a second. Um, kind of briefly roll through it, but um, upon proposing it, I realized that this is an important topic to me, um, and after some brainstorming of, of how I can convey it, um, I decided to make a video about it. Um, as someone who wants to be a journalist, I'm a storyteller, it's what I do, so I thought the video was probably the best way to go about that. Um, like I said, the video is still in the editing process, but um, it's, it includes me just talking about George Carl and his career. Basically, what I summed up in the previous slide, um, and B, the B-roll is clips from his actual HBO specials. Um, a lot of it has to do with uh, politics and, and, his, and his comedy. Um, important topics include the FCC versus Pacifica Foundation case. Uh, that was the official name of the Supreme Court case that um, Carlin had a big part in. Um, people that Carlin influenced um, with his comedy, such as um, late night host John Stewart, Louis C.K., Jerry Seinfeld, you know, uh, just to name a few. Um, and basically look into his personal life and why he feels the way he does about politics and certain uh, political issues. Um, so at this point I will show my, um, kind of give you a snippet into what I presented at ECA because even though my uh, video is still being edited, this this slideshow is pretty much the script of what I had to what I had to say. Um, like I said, I'm not going to read all of it, but um, basically, I start off talking about George Carlin. Um, you know who who he is, what he did. Um, yeah, he wasn't just a comedian; he was an actor. Um, he was he was around for 40, 50 years. Um, I go on to talk about his early comedy, um, his appearances on the Tonight Show. 
um, hosting the first episode of Saturday Night, Saturday Night Live ever. Um, how a lot of his early comedy was um, put on CD instead of uh, recorded. He didn't start recording his HBO specials until the late 70s, and he was doing comedy in the 60s. Um, talked about you know how he was signed away from a uh, you know, major record company in RCA to go to just a small subsidiary of Atlantic Records, Little David, um, and then kind of talked about the stylistic change he, he went under. He went from family-friendly to a lot more adult-themed um, content. Um, and I thought it was important to talk about Carlin's legal and personal troubles. Um, he is very, in regards to his opposition to some political views, there, there have been times that like he got arrested for uh, not have, issuing an ID to someone because he didn't believe in government issued IDs. Um, you know, he, he dealt with several addictions such as alcohol, Vicodin, uh, cocaine, went to rehab um, shortly before his death, um, how he was arrested seven times for the controversial seven dirty words uh, routine. Um, you know, I talk about how I, I went through all of Carlin's HBO specials. He had 14 of them, um, you know, to, to look for political themes. And, um, like, I, it, you know, there is the content warning that he does have, he, he is a foul mouth. So, um, so, you know, then that's when I kind of get into the policy. Like I said, this presentation kind of was the roadmap for, for my video. Um, like, I, like I told you guys earlier, he was unique in that um, he never told stories about himself, or he very rarely did at, at that. He told the truth about several different subjects, including politics, and that's how he drew drew laughter and, and, and grew his fame. Um, there are several examples that I include, which um, all of these are in video form. Luckily, um, you know, I didn't have to uh, read them out like I had to, like I had to an ECA. Um, so several different examples that I used in that. Several of the quips um, in here, there's a, there's, a couple, there's a couple that aren't even in here that I included because they were really, really interesting to me. Um, one of my favorite ones that I didn't include was, um, you know, I have this moronic thing that I do, it's called thinking, um, which he goes on a tangent about how um, he is a poor American because he forms his own opinion and stuff like that. Um, so then I, then I get to the real meat of the video, which is the seven dirty words routine. Um, describe, you know, what, what the words are, why they are part of that list. Um, you know, how long he's been doing it. Um, that brings me into the, the Supreme Court case um, and the ruling that, that basically said the FCC is allowed to, to an extent, censor what is said when you are on live, uh, on live TV. Uh, the Carlin warning came about, which basically said, which basically noticed outside of TV and radio stations that when guests come on, they basically tell them, hey, these are, these are the words you can't say while you're live on the air. Um, and how Carlin continued to perform the routine despite all of this, despite the Supreme Court, you know, getting, invo getting involved, um, despite being arrested seven times for it. Um, he continued to perform because it's arguably one of his most iconic bits um, as a comedian. Um, and then I kind of wind down by saying, you know, by talking about his impact, about how he was more of, um, he made fun of both sides of the aisle. He was, um, Again, one of the greatest true telling comedians of all time, or at least he's widely regarded that way. Um, again, influenced several modern day comedians, um, especially like in the case of Stephen Colbert and John Stewart. Um, they hosted late night talk shows that revolve around politics. So, um, you know, they kind of drew from Carlin directly in, in that regard. Um, so with that being said, um, I would like to conclude with a quote from George Carlin. Uh, I think I am, therefore I am. I think. Listen.